All astronomers are waiting for Betelgeuse to go kablooey, for the left shoulder of Orion to go supernova and become as bright as the moon for almost a month. Well, astronomers at Liverpool John Moores and Montpellier Universities now advance the theory that we'll all get a last minute warning of when it will go pop. Oh, that's cool. If you partake of a backyard telescope, you'll fall into one of two camps. Either you're excited about the prospect of one of the most familiar stars in one of the most familiar constellations exploding to outshine every other star, all the planets and possibly even the moon for a few weeks. Or you'll be sad to see Orion lose its left shoulder and look quite different for the rest of time. If you're not an astronomer, you might still be excited by the prospect of a super bright star in the sky. And of course, you couldn't give a flying f that the constellation Orion will look different afterwards because you probably didn't know what it looks like now. So, you're the real winner of all of this. And there are actually dozens of giant stars in the night sky that are, in old age, running out of fuel and beginning to die. These will go supernova, which means they will rapidly contract and then explode, releasing light comparable to that of an entire galaxy, which will slowly fade again over weeks or months. And when this happens, they leave behind a neutron star or a black hole and the gas and dust that escaped the pull of the remaining massive object is illuminated and grows over hundreds of years to become a beautiful nebula like the Crab Nebula supernova remnant in the constellation Taurus. Of those dozens of supernova candidates, many are visible to us overhead at night. Speaker in Virgo, Antares in Scorpio, Rigel in Orion, and of course the one every astronomer is watching out for, Betelgeuse in Orion. The closest supernova candidate to Earth is U Scorpii, 64,000 light years away. This star fizzes with activity, but although a supernova can produce as much energy in an instant as the Sun produces in its entire 10 billion year lifetime, None of them are close enough to be dangerous and will be nothing more than a spectacular light show and a learning opportunity for astronomers. Even Betelgeuse, the most exciting prospect for a supernova in our lifetimes, is still very unlikely to be seen exploding by anyone alive today. When we consider that the best estimate we can give is that it will go supernova sometime in the next 100,000 years. And the only warning that we would get would be from super sensitive neutrino detectors on Earth. Neutrinos are fired out from a star in enormous quantities when that star goes supernova, released just a little earlier than other forms of energy are. And that means the neutrinos get a head start over the light we can see being released. So we've always thought the best indication of a star about to go supernova would be a big spike in neutrinos a few hours beforehand. Well, there are also two theories about how stars die. The superwind model suggests the star releases its outer layers slowly over decades, causing a gradual dimming from our vantage point. And the rapid outburst model says the star's outer layers are released quickly in its last few months, meaning it only visibly dims when the star is just weeks from exploding. But astronomers from Liverpool John Moores and Montpellier universities conducted a study of all the red supergiant supernovae candidates that have ever been observed before they exploded, which actually isn't a lot. But what they did see in common amongst all those supernovas was that the stars didn't gradually dim over the years running up to the violent explosion. So the superwind model is losing traction, and we now think the fast dimming of a star in its last days is more likely. Now you might remember that Betelgeuse dimmed significantly in 2019, making many of us wonder if it was about to go supernova. And that might make you think, isn't that a dimming that means it should have gone supernova if this theory is correct? Well, not really. Although astronomers were wondering if this was a dimming associated with the end of a red supergiant, in this case Betelgeuse, and many of us were waiting with bated breath, it didn't continue dimming to the level that the models suggest, not by a long way. Now, most stars routinely cough away material in events known as coronal mass ejection. Our sun does this all of the time, and it's the cause of the most beautiful auroras. 
But Beetlejuice's mass ejection in 2019 was a whopper coughing out more than 400 billion times more material than our sun's average burps. The amount of material ejected was roughly equivalent to the mass of Mercury. And as all that material cooled, it became a cloud of dust that blocked some of the star's light and made it look dimmer from our view. After this ejection, life carried on as normal for Beetlejuice and the dust scattered away from the star. But the rapid outburst model that this new study gives more weight to suggests the star will dim by a factor of a hundred in the last few months before it explodes, much more than Beetlejuice did in 2019, when we were all wondering, some of us hoping. Now, for a foundation for this new study, there aren't a lot of supernovas that have been observed because they're not easy to predict, to slew a telescope to, and there are even fewer that have been observed over decades running up to a supernova. But the good news is that we're now starting to see more capable sky surveys, that is telescopes with a wide field of view that just stare into the sky, observing it constantly for days, weeks, months or even years. And we have some incredible technology being built to do this over the coming decades. Existing survey telescopes like PanStars and Linear do this to look for comets and near-Earth asteroids, while the Vera Rubin Observatory, due to begin operations next year in 2023, will look for asteroids, comets, supernovae, distant planets, gamma ray bursts, and pretty much everything else that can be studied in the sky, especially tracking their movements or activity over time. So that means we'll not only see distant supernovas in unprecedented detail when they do happen, but we'll have an intricate timeline of events running up to the explosions to confirm any visible predictors for those that we're wondering about. So astronomers will continue looking for the dimming of supernova candidates in case that's foretelling an imminent and magnificent astronomical event. And of course, if you're that non-astronomer, you just have to keep an eye on the news or this YouTube channel. And when we say that Beetlejuice is really dimming, you know, there's a good chance it might be about to go kablooey. So let us know in the comments below if you think we're likely to see Beetlejuice go pop in our lifetimes. Just imagine how cool it would be if we could predict exactly when supernovas would happen. So we could have supernova parties and let the skies light up as a backdrop. And if you want to know how stars are born, live and die, of course you do, then take a look at these videos.